Welcome to Supply Chain Management. In this lecture on aggregate planning, we are going to talk about how you're going to model aggregate plan mathematically. Now, in the last lecture, you have looked at what aggregate plan is, what the inputs are, what the output is, and uh, essentially the different pure strategies you can use to do an aggregate plan. We talked about chase, which was hiring and firing, time flexibility, which uses overtime or underutilized time, and then inventory and back orders to handle, um, to manage capacity. Now we're going to talk about hybrid strategies and how we are going to use mathematic models to get the best solution. So let's go dive right in and let's start with the first step. So the first thing is what are our decision variables? These are things that the computer needs to decide or as a manager you need to decide on take these decisions. Essentially you have to figure out how many workers you need each month. You've got to figure out to get the number of workers each month. You need to know how many people you're going to hire and how many people you're going to lay off. You are going to have to decide how many units you need to produce each month. You have to decide based on the number of units produced and your demand, you have to decide how many units are going to be held in inventory each month or whether you're going to have a stock out or back order each month. And finally, based on this production demand and inventory, you're going to figure out how many units subcontracted. Now you have normal time work time, but you also have the option of asking your workers to work overtime. And so this is something you need to decide of how many overtime hours are being worked. So let's take an example problem. Here is the forecast for the next six months. So January to June, you have the forecast and like everybody who does a good forecast, let's go ahead and plot this forecast. So we see that we start in January, go up right up to March, April, and then we start dropping, right? This is our demand and this is how we handle it, right? Um, and so let's look at our inputs. Here are the costs for these inputs. Material costs, that is the cost of that unit is $10 per unit. Remember, we calculated using the weighted average in lecture one of aggregate planning. The inventory holding cost is $2 per unit. Marginal cost of stock out of backlog is $5. Hiring and training cost $300 per worker. Layoff cost is $500 per worker. You need four hours per unit to make this item. Regular time cost is $4. Overtime for the employees $6 and cost of subcontracting is about $30 per unit. So each worker here works eight hours a day, 20 days a month. Your beginning workforce is 80. Your maximum overtime uh, is about 10 hours. So each worker can work 10 hours a month extra. Your beginning inventory is 1,000 and your ending inventory has to finish at 500. These are all required. These are all inputs given to you. So your aggregate plan, if we want to model, first we have to create labels for our different variables. To write things in math, we need to have symbols. So time period, we have time period, small t is signifies time period, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, signifying January to June. Workforce, we call it WT, so this is each month. This is going to be W1, W2, W3, W4, W5, W6. Similarly, HT is number of employees hired at the beginning of the month. Again, you have H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. L is the number of employees laid off. Again, you have six different Ls, L1 to L6. Production is P1 to P6, production in each month. Inventory at the end of each month is I1 to I6. Stock out at each month, end of each month is S1 to S6. Subcontracting is signified by C, C1 to C6. And overtime hours is O1 to O6. So here are your variables. You have 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, multiplied by 6, 6 months, 48 variables here. So first thing you got to figure out is what is your objective? Your objective function is to minimize your total costs. And so your costs include regular time labor costs. You have overtime labor costs, cost of hiring and layoffs, cost of holding inventory, cost of stocking out, cost of subcontracting and material costs. So here is the formula. So you have, let's, let's go through each one. You have 640 WT. So this is this sign here is the summation sign where T is equal to 1 to 6. This signifies this is W1 plus W2 plus W3 plus W4 plus W5 plus W6, right? So this is what you expanded, and each one is multiplied by 640. So where did we get 640? I mean, you know the other values come from that table, which are the inputs. Where is 640 coming from? So 640 is worker pay is $4 per hour, but they work eight hours a day, 20 days a month, which gives you $640 per worker per month. So in one month, it's 640 is multiplied by the number of workers to give you this. Similarly, your overtime, overtime, is six dollars per hour and this is the o1 is the number of hours in time period one o2 o3 so you're going to add up and multiply it by six dollars o gives you the number of hours so six multiplied by the number of hours gives you the total overtime cost three hundred dollars is for each hire and you're going to multiply it by the number of hires in each month 500 for layoff so that's here two dollars for inventory per unit stock out production this is the material cost and then here con sub cost of subcontracting so now we're going to talk about the constraints so the first one was the objective now let's look at the constraints we're going to deal with the first one is the number of workers you have in a time period is equal to the number of workers in the previous time period plus how many you hire now minus how much you're firing that makes common sense right if you had last time period last month you had 30 workers and you hired five and you sub and you fired two then you'll have 30 plus 5 minus 2 that gives you 33 and you're going to do it for time periods 1 to 6 so you have w1 is equal to w0 plus H1 minus L1. So you've got to do for all six time periods here. Similarly, capacity constraints. How much you produce, the amount produced is less than the total amount produced by all workers during normal time and the amount produced during overtime. So you've got to figure out how many uh, how many units a worker can produce during normal time. Now, how did we get 40? If you look at this, each worker works 20 days a month, eight hours a day, that's 160 hours. And then it takes about four hours to produce one unit. So 160 divided by four is 40. And then under overtime, here's the total number of overtime hours and if you divide it by four, this gives you the production in overtime. So this is the total possible production, whereas this is how much you're actually producing and how much you actually produce has to be less than the total possible production. Inventory constraints. So here we have beginning inventory. That's why you have T minus one beginning inventory minus beginning stock out right that's t minus one plus the production plus subcontracting this is all the stuff that's coming in should be equal to demand ending inventory minus ending stock out this is all the stuff which is going out and this has to happen for all six time periods over time limit constraints now remember each worker can work only 10 hours so number of workers multiplied by 10 is the total amount of 
overtime hours and so overtime actual overtime hours has to be less than that so with this we finished the mathematical model the next um, lecture is going to show you how to do it in Excel so let's stop right here uh, review this material and then we move on to Excel